Hey guys, it's Tina here. Welcome back to a new episode of Tina Tries It. In today's episode, I'm going to be trying out acrylic pouring. Now, acrylic pouring has been on my bucket list for the longest time. I absolutely love watching videos on acrylic pouring on YouTube. For those of you who don't know what acrylic pouring is, it's a painting technique that involves mixing different acrylic colors together, pouring it on a canvas to create this beautiful abstract art. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen some videos on it. It's really mesmerizing and satisfying to watch. With this type of painting, there's actually numerous techniques involved in different mediums and additives you can use in the acrylic pour. And seeing that I'm a complete noob at this, I've never done it, I thought it would be best to seek a professional to help me out. And I found the perfect place in Singapore, Room to Imagine. They're an art studio that teaches acrylic pouring workshops. So perfect for beginners. And I'm about to head over there to meet Cindy, who is the founder of the studio. Okay guys, I'm at Room to Imagine with Cindy. You've had your studio for like two and a half years. Yes. You also do like other sort of workshops as well. Like you can see all her amazing creations yes. behind me. Tell me a little bit about how you got started. I did um, art in school. I found that teaching people about fluid art was something that um, I found quite fulfilling. And I actually found you on Instagram. I was kind of like stalking you a little bit and seeing actually like <laughs> students' work, seeing a lot of people come here and they're beginners, so perfect. Mm. And best of all, when you come to a studio and you do a workshop, you don't have to worry about the mess you're making because yes. I originally wanted to try this at home, but I just knew that it would be a disaster. So I'm here at Room to Imagine and Cindy's going to run it through a little bit about how to do it, the tools that we need. And I think we're gonna do like a little practice piece on a smaller canvas before committing to a, a fairly bigger one. We have these bottles of paint that we see here. So these paints actually um, are already pretty fluid because we have already mixed them um, to be ready to pour. So how we actually get to this consistency that we see is that we actually put these two things together, uh -huh. which is basically um, regular acrylic paint and something we call pouring medium. We mix that in the ratio of about one part of this to two parts of this mm -hmm. to get the consistency that we see here. Right, so after you mix it, you can just leave it in these bottles. Yes, okay. yes we can. So it's easier, you know, when you want to pour, you don't have so much preparation work to do. Mm -hmm. So that's typically what we, what we have here. So we are actually going to try it out on a smaller canvas first before we do the larger one. Put some of the used cups that we have underneath the canvas, like so. Mm -hmm. And then just check with the spirit level. Mm -hmm. and just to make sure that everything is okay. So for this technique that we're going to do, we actually need to do a little bit of planning. The order of the colours that go into the cup will actually determine how it's going to show up. Right, so, okay, so there is planning. It's not yes. as simple as pouring <laughs> whatever, okay. So the first colour that goes into the cup will actually end up being in the middle. And then, of course, subsequently the last colour will end up a little bit more around the side. The edges, okay. Yes. Okay, so we're going to start putting some colours mm -hmm. and actually every colour that we add in is going to be a little bit more than the last. Uh, so you've got to kind of double the yes, amount. Yes, yes, right. slightly more than the last. And when you're squeezing it, you're kind of squeezing it to the side? Yes, we are actually creating like a little spout that we're going to pour out from later. Right. Then with this cup, we're actually going to put it aside for, the, for now. And we are going to do like a simple like a base coat on this just to help the colour to flow a little bit better. Ah, okay, right. Yes, so then we have our palette now. Does it, does it matter what colour we put on it? Uh, no, but usually I will pick one of the colours that we've put in the cup. Okay. So it's very simple, we will just take a palette knife, or if you prefer, you can just use your hands. Just make sure that the corners and everything are kind of coated in paint, so that it's a bit easier for 
um, the paint to flow around later. Okay, so this is fine. You can see it doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, so it doesn't have to cover the whole thing. It's just no. more the corner. Okay. Yes, because we're gonna pour right here. In the right. Middle. So that will. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know why I feel nervous. I'm not even doing it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we'll start pouring. So mm -hmm. um, I will try to pour down the middle. So once you start pouring, it goes like this. And as you see, right, even if you don't move your hand, you already have some swirls. Yeah, it's already swirling. Yes, yeah. and if your hands are really steady, you can actually try to draw tiny circles. That will change it up a little bit more. Oh. Yeah, so that's kind of like the advanced option. Oh, advanced. Okay, I think I can, I can nail yeah. this advanced All <laughs> technique. Right. So, yeah, this technique, uh, a lot of people say it reminds them of latte art. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Oh, I mean, I'm not great at that either. I've tried, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, my little love hearts and leaves turn into mush. <laughs> okay, so when you are nearing the end of the cup, just remember to kind of end it gently so that you don't have like a long tail oh, running okay. out. Okay, so you just use your fingers to yeah, cut just it to off. catch yes yep. the last bit of paint. So now we are actually going to pick it up and move it around, Ooh. and then we can just go around in like a circular way. So I think I have a little bit too much red, so I'll pour a little bit off, and then I will go this way. So basically, just rotate it until you cover everything. Oh, yeah. it's actually so quick and very highly effective. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. So just make sure that your hands are not um, wet with paint before you actually do hold the, the torch because it's going to be dangerous. Highly flammable. Yes. <laughs> because of the way that we pour using the bottles and all, there's actually a fair bit of air bubbles in the painting. So oh, we are okay, going yeah. to use this to remove that. But other than that as well, we can actually use that to give a little bit of an effect of um, the cells. So I'm just going to do a partial torching. So for example, like this. Oh, it creates these little yes, interesting little effect. bubbles, which we call cells. So if you just torch, like, yes, partially, then you get the cells kind of running through certain parts. So you don't have to torch everything because you're really trying to keep the lines. That is really cool. So that is that how you get that effect to make it look like the ocean and the, yes. the waves? Yes, exactly actually. So that can be used to create effect like a sea foam. So that's it for this piece. Mm -hmm. And typically this will take um, between one to three days to dry. So we'll leave it aside. And mm -hmm. actually now it will be Tina's turn to give it a go. <laughs> she made it look so easy, but I'm just going to be like, Ugh. Okay. I strategically picked them. No, I didn't. I just kind of picked the colors that I liked, but um, I'm going to do five colors. You can't tell, but I'm actually shaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really like this color. So I'll just like squeegee it on. Spread it up. Should yes. I start swirling the circles or should I just let it run a little bit? You can let it run a little bit, okay. especially um, when the second color starts to come out. And if you want to do swirls, you can. Okay. Mm. Ooh. Yes, you're doing a great job. Just hold it steady. Yep, perfect. Nice and slow. Perfect. I'm done guys, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, yes, pick it up and then just try to spread out the paint to the four corners. Now it's really the scary <laughs> part. Yeah, you can pull out the greens or you can touch everything, it's up to you. Yes. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. I'm not going to touch anymore. I'll <laughs> ruin it. <laughs> okay, this this piece is going to sell for five thousand dollars, guys. Who wants to buy it? <laughs> that was actually pretty easy. It looks good. It looks good. Yeah, mm. I mean, because I, I guess it's abstract, so there's no right or wrong. It was easy to maneuver, maneuver because it's like a small piece, but yes. I, I can't imagine what it's like when you've got like a bigger canvas. So. Yes, which is what we are going to do right now. Okay, I think we've. <laughs> We check with the little practice. Now we're actually going to do like a bigger piece. So wish me luck. My heart's been ripped wide open. So many mixed emotions. 
It's like I finally know. Yeah, one more cup. One more cup. Are you sure? I feel like there's yes. a lot of paint. No, no, no. Don't She's worry about it. <laughs> I spent a lifetime running. Fearing what I'd become. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now for the base coat. Speaking out straight from my heart, but now I see. But now I see. Oh, I see this love is taking over. Okay, so you need to kind of decide where you want to pour them. So maybe space them out a little bit, like in a triangle. Should I swirl it? If you want to, if not, you can just hold it there. So maybe I'll just hold it and see yes. what effect I get. Yes. I'm never gonna hold back being someone to lean on. I'll always be that two way phone call when you need one. When everything in life is getting harder to shoulder, I'll be your soldier. My heart's been ripping wide. Good. Okay, come. Let's wipe your hand first. Okay. It's good. So, are you going to torch it a little I bit? I am going to torch this baby. All right. Alrighty guys, I am done with my masterpiece. This is probably the best thing I've ever created and Alfred is totally <laughs> going to let me hang this up. I've done other pieces of like acrylic painting before, uh, which um, yeah, I, I, I feel like Alfred kind of made me just hide away and really we throw it out because it wasn't good enough. But I think this one is <laughs> perfect for our studio so thank you so much cindy Great. now i i can't take it home with me today unfortunately because how long does it take to dry um this will have to sit for about one to three days here to dry mm -hmm. so if you're doing this at home then you know just put it somewhere where you know you don't have to put it in the sun or near the fan or anything like that just put it somewhere um nice and cool out of reach of maybe children or you know your pets if you have mm. any so that they don't you know step into this and then after three days it should be perfect and this doesn't need like an additional top coat or anything it's kind of like just good to go yes yes acrylic paint is pretty durable it's okay. very permanent okay yes. so i guess i'll see this like three days later so a few days has passed and my pieces are dry so i picked it up from the studio and i have it here and i'm ready to show you guys actually so pretty this is the first small piece if you guys remember this is my practice piece i actually really like the color combinations i use this is giving me futurama vibes and then here is the bigger piece i'm trying to like position it so you guys can see the silvery part i absolutely love how this turned out i love how i combined the silver with the blues and the whites and that sort of like pinky shade also if you look closely you can see the little speckles or the little circles that the blow torch made it just looks really beautiful and when i look at this piece it kind of calms me down kind of reminds me of the ocean almost I'm definitely going to find places for these pieces, maybe around the house or maybe at my new studio that's currently being built. Either way, these are definitely going on display. Overall, I had lots of fun doing my first acrylic pouring pieces. Surprisingly, it was a lot easier than I thought, I guess, you know, because Cindy pretty much pre-mixed everything for me and... I didn't have to make a mess at home. That was my biggest fear. I knew that if I was going to try it out myself and try to figure out the whole thing, my room will be covered with acrylic paint. Now, if you guys live in Singapore or if you plan on visiting Singapore sometime in the future, do check out Cindy's studio. She runs um, a few different types of workshops. So I did the acrylic pouring one, but there's also like resin pouring. I want to do that. That looked really cool. And she also sells some like beginner acrylic pouring kits if you want to do it at home. So I'll leave all the details for you guys below. But yeah, that is it to this episode of Tina Tries That. I hope you guys have enjoyed this artsy episode. Let me know what you want to see next. So resin art is definitely on my list. I also want to make some jewelry out of polymer clay. That's also on my list. So let me know if you guys want to see any of those. If you're new here, don't forget to click subscribe and ring that notification bell button so that every time I upload a new video, you will be the first to know. That is it for me, guys. I shall speak to you guys next time.
バイ。